Dear Jane, you're probably not going to be seeing me around the 4th of July picnic after all. Sure wish I'd gotten around to writing before now, because I doubt there's mail service home from wherever it is I found myself. Some tropical island in God knows where. That's not me trying to keep secrets. I figure you must have heard by now that I never made it ashore in Normandy anyway. Nope, no ratsies here. But just about everyone and everything else is trying its damnedest to kill me. Get this, there are living, breathing dinosaurs on this island. I can guess what you must be thinking right about now. Bobby's gone clear off his rocker. But I'm writing you hand on heart. Swear on my dear mama's grave. Somehow, those things are still walking around here. Just as alive as I am. Makes about as much sense as me finding this handmade camera and typewriter just lying around on the beach. But maybe these picture postcards will prove I ain't making any of this up. They do say seeing's believing, right? Anyway, I'm still trying to work it all out myself. But I promise you, I'm gonna find a way home. And picnic or not, we'll make some fireworks together when I do. I'll write you again soon, Janie. But just now, I think I hear a dinner sore clucking in the bushes. I'm so hungry, Bob. P.S. Tell Bill he still owes me that 20 from the big New Year's poker game. And we ain't waiting till 1945 to collect. Now, Jane, before you get all wound up about me spending time with some castaway girl, let me just say, you got nothing to worry about on that score. It's more like when your folks used to make us take your know-it-all kid sister along with us everywhere. You know, a real pain in the ass. She just washed up on my beach, and boy, does it show. Doubt the girl would last half a day on this island if I wasn't here to babysit her. She's too damn soft. The very first time I saw her, she kept me from catching some squab for dinner. And suddenly I've got some brat lecturing me about how her precious new pet's the last of its kind. Wants me to take her seriously. Like she's some kind of expert. All she has to do is look around. I mean, those fat little birds are all over the place here. I haven't even told you the nuttiest part. How she claims to be from the future? At least she says the good guys won. Which means... You stayed safe and sound stateside. Either way, I thought I'd better show the girl what we're dealing with here. Man-eating monsters, floating sky things, the whole nine yards. 
But maybe I shouldn't have rushed her. She's been just staring at all of it. Long enough for me to take her picture and write you this note. But don't worry. I promise I won't let her slow me down too much. Nothing's keeping me from getting back to your home cooking. Save me some, baby. Bob. Dear Jane, you're probably not going to be seeing me around the 4th of July picnic after all. Sure wish I'd gotten around to writing before now, because I doubt there's mail service home from wherever it is I found myself. Some tropical island in God knows where. Not me trying to keep secrets. I figure you must have heard by now that I never made it ashore in Normandy yet. Hey, Janie. Not sure why I'm getting around to writing home now. Ain't like I can mail you anything from underground. Maybe you heard. I never made it to France. Though, I guess you wouldn't know that's where I was supposed to be headed. Before I woke up inside this monster spider nest. I tell you, my skin was crawling even before I found this homemade camera and typewriter hanging around in a cobweb. I don't want to think about what happened to the owner. But... At least it saves you having to make out my chicken scratch handwriting. Seemed like I wandered around in the dark forever before I managed to throw together a torch and shed some light of my situation. Right away, I wished I had it. Just about everything creeping around down here is too damn big. If bugs as long as my arm ain't weird enough for you, I saw an honest to God saber toothed tiger prowling around. Well, I don't need to tell you I kept my distance from that mean old cat. I'm not sure how it didn't smell me. I must reek to high heaven by now. Gotta sign off now. Something's just blew out the cave wall, so daylight's shining through. Looks like there's a tropical jungle out there. I can even hear birds calling. Can't wait to roast up a few of those. Though I'm not looking forward to having to squeeze past an eight-legged carcass the size of a bus. Be glad you're not here, too. Bob.
Janie, you wouldn't believe what I've been through since I crawled out of that nice, safe cave. Feel pretty dumb for giving up a perfectly good hidey hole over a few bugs. I traded cool, peace, and quiet for a steaming forest full of freaks. I'm talking actual, real-life dinosaurs, stomping and flapping around as if they didn't all die out a zillion years ago. Did the Nazis fire some kind of time ray at us? Because if I'm lost in the past, I got no idea how to find my way home to you. Climbing up that mountain didn't help me figure anything out either. Dinos from here to the sea, with no sign of civilization other than some shiny floaty towers that don't look all that prehistorical. I don't want to think about those things too hard. At least I had this camera along so I could show you what I've been running from. Sure, I'm hungry. But I wasn't about to go anywhere near those giant nests, eggs or no. Still, something riled up those big bat birds enough to chase me back down the mountain and into the woods. Barely survived getting dive-bombed long enough to get bushwhacked by some goons in armor, riding on rats as big as horses. They say they're taking me to some kind of prison camp, upriver. Can't say I like the sound of that. If it ain't one thing, it's another. Bob. Janie, I'm free. I didn't think I'd ever be able to write you again after those rat riders put me to work in their mine. They confiscated my gear at the gate and tried to get me to wear a second-hand prison outfit. <sighs> those rags stunk like someone had just died in them. So I said thanks, but no thanks. I'd rather work my all together. I was sorry real quick I turned down any way to cover up after I got put to work in that hot sun. By the end of the first day, I had blisters on my blisters. And after sundown, it was like out of the frying pan and into the freezer. All the damn mist coming off the river clung to everything. And they locked us up deep in the dark and cold. And it wasn't like we got blankets or turndown service there. No lullabies or pillows with mints on them. Believe it or not, this little girl was the one who started our jailbreak. She caught an armload of monster centipedes that we had crawling all over to help her break us out. Turns out, their spit can melt right through iron chains. Was planning to do more to hell before I got knocked on my ass in a stampede of one of those big cart-pulling armadillo things. By the time I finally came to again, it was all over and the place was deserted. Can't blame everyone for wanting to get out while the getting's good. Back into the woods, I guess. Bob. <laughs> 